Hi and welcome back to another video. Now a few videos back I showed you guys an install of a Paradar vertical antenna which was mounted on my mask to be used with Meshtastic. Now it was fed with low loss coax and was connected to a box mounted T-Beam Supreme in my radio shack. However the antenna developed a fault so I decided to change the installation completely. Now changing the antenna the mounting location and the Mestastic device. So the antenna that I opted to purchase was the McGill Microwave 9 dBi antenna and pricing at the time of purchase was around 50 UK pounds plus tax plus shipping. The specifications roll out quite well according to the data sheet for the antenna. Now it's only 1.6 meters in length but it weighs a hefty three kilograms which is one of the reasons I opted to install this new antenna on its own mast. The antenna comes in two parts and is supplied with mounting pole brackets, which you have to attach yourself. Now that center connector, which joins the two halves together, appears to be well-constructed design and it definitely looks hard wearing. The connector on the bottom of the antenna is an N-type male and even that appears to be of quite good quality. I guess time will tell once it's been up in the air for a while. Instead of feeding this antenna with coax, I'm installing all the electronics into a waterproof box at the base of the antenna. Now the only reason for this is because the coax length would have been too long for where the new mast is gonna be installed. Now while there is a certain amount of coax loss I'm prepared to endure, this would have been too much. I did, however, use the low loss coax that I was feeding the Paradar vertical with on a Paradar Yagi antenna and just had it pointing north. Now this will be a test antenna for when I'm just tinkering in the shack. Now talking of tinkering, let's take a look in the box that's gonna be mounted at the base of the antenna. Now I'm sure a few of you will want to make some kind of comment regarding how I put this together and I should have done this and I should have done that, but I'm literally not interested. I built this and had it on test for a couple of weeks at the end of my garden and it was through all types of weathers without any issues. But please feel free to comment if you need to. Obviously, if you have questions, feel free to ask them down in the comments. So the LoRa board is the Rack Wireless Wisblock base with the Rack module. Now the Bluetooth antenna is stuck to the inside. You can see this at the bottom of the image, just inside the box. Now I did test with an external antenna on that SMA connection that has a red cover over it. However, the performance was just the same. So I waterproofed the hole and went back to using that stock BLE antenna that came with the Rack Wireless module. The antenna connection is an N-type female, which is located at the top or to the left on this particular photo. That obviously connects directly into the base of the new McGill antenna. You will of course notice the Raspberry Pi 4, which serves a few purposes. Firstly, the Pi 4 is powered over ethernet and has a WaveShare PoE hat. The Rack Wireless module is connected to the Pi via one of the USB ports on the Pi 4, and that provides power, and it also provides a serial connection for updating the firmware. Now you also notice a couple of wires going from the Pi 4's GPIO pins to the WizBlock baseboard. Now these are the blue and purple wires that you can see there. Now this is so that I can access the serial module on the Meshtastic device from the Raspberry Pi. I can either SSH or I can use something like real VNC once it's all up in the air. Some of you are probably wondering why I've used power over ethernet instead of just feeding it with a USB cable. Well, if I'd have used a single USB cable to the box, then I would not have had access to this serial module output hence why I've just put a Pi 4 in the box. Now the Rack Wireless device does support PoE itself, but for me, it didn't work. So that's another reason for installing a Pi 4 in this box. Now you'll also notice a battery in a little holder at the bottom. Now it's a single 18650 3000 milliamp hour battery. Now this means if there's ever a power cut, then the node will continue to run, at least until that battery runs out. And the battery only powers the node and it doesn't power the Pi. So I still get my Bluetooth connection to the Meshtastic node, even if the power's off. Now the box is fed with 15 meters of waterproof Cat8 cable 
And this just plugs into the bottom of the box using one of those waterproof socket assemblies. Now in the shack, I use a TP-Link PoE Plus adapter, and this provides plenty of power up that Cat8 cable to power both the Pi 4 and that Rack Wireless LoRa module, and enough power to charge the battery, or at least keep it topped up. Now once it was all installed, I reset the node DB so that the node list lost all of its previously detected nodes. Now after a short period of time, I was detecting three nodes specifically that I'd not previously seen, well, at least directly. Now these are on the map DDC4, 32CC and JTGW node. They're kind of north, northeast from my location. Now my node is the one at the bottom titled Matt or Tech Mines Base. Now unfortunately, the Chilton Hills are pretty much south of me, so receiving any node south is pretty impossible unless someone is up on the hills with a node and then we can kind of hop through them which incidentally has happened in the past and it's made my node disk fill up. So by all accounts, it appears the new installation is working as intended and I'm quite happy about that. Now the PoE adapter that I showed you earlier is also plugged into my home network. So the Pi 4 is accessible over IP. Now using PuTTY, I can SSH directly into the Pi and I can even run the Meshtastic CLI like so, if I wanted to make a quick change. And when it comes to upgrading the firmware, I do have to use VNC so that I can view the desktop of the Pi. This then allows me to run the Chromium browser and access the Meshtastic firmware flashing website. Now the Rack Wireless modules work a little different to how other modules work, in the sense that in order to update the firmware, you have to enter DFU mode, and by doing so, the node essentially becomes like a thumb drive. Now, once it's in the DFU mode, you'll get a little window pop up and then you can just download the latest firmware file and then you drag it and drop it onto the node. Now, once it's all copied over, the node will reboot and the firmware will be upgraded. But of course, we want to check it. So to ensure the new firmware was successfully installed, we can use the Meshtastic CLI command for retrieving the device's metadata. And as you can see here, we've updated the node to the latest alpha version at the time of making this video. Okay, the time has come to draw a winner for the Meshtastic Starter Kit giveaway that I announced in a recent video. Now for this, I'm gonna use a website called commentspicker.com and then enter the video URL where you all entered. Now enter the keyword, which was hashtag techminds, and let's see who's won. Now I'm just moving my mouse point around here while it's picking a winner. It does seem to take a little bit of time for it to do it. And I'm just kind of waffling on while it's processing and thinking. And there we go. Congratulations to Trevor Van Cleef 235. Now, if that's you, then please find my contact details in the about section of my channel and drop me an email. I'll reply and give you the details you need to receive your Meshtastic starter kit. Thanks to all those that entered and better luck next time. I'll have more giveaways coming up very soon. Anyway, guys, hope you enjoyed this video. And until the next one, take care, stay safe. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one.